So if you're new to 3D printing and you don't know a lot about modeling, there are some tools out there that can help you a bunch that are very easy to work with. So in this video, we're gonna talk about 3D Builder. Now, 3D Builder was originally created by Microsoft, but they took it out of the store because they didn't wanna to continue to maintain it, which means that if you wanna download it anymore, you have to actually go to CNET. So we'll just go online and download it right here over or soft tonic. There we go. But download it from here. This is a good, safe download. It'll work just fine. And 3D Builder is a really useful tool. Today, we're going to go ahead and walk through how to use it for organizing your SDLs, making sure they're ready for an app like Teleport and those types of deals. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and download just 3D Builder for the time being. It's kind of surprising and sad that they didn't continue to support it because it is just so darn useful. So when you get into 3D Builder, this is what you're gonna see, this nice, simple thing. Um, once it's all done loading up there, we'll go ahead and create a new scene. And now you have the space. Right-clicking lets you pan left and right. Left-clicking lets you spin, just like this. So we're gonna go ahead and insert just a, a basic cube here, and it will drop in a basic cube. And in order to mess around with this cube, you have the ability to move it around by moving these arrows or by placing the coordinates right here. So you can go like 100 and I'll shoot off to the right, just like that. We'll take that all down to zero, just control Z there. The other options are you can rotate it using these arrows just like this, all pretty intuitive. And then of course you can resize it. And the resizing has a little bit of a few weird features to it. You can just pull one edge and stretch it like that or you can lock it, and then when you pull one edge, it'll take all of them with it. So this is the uniform uh, resize versus uh, individual side resize. Okay, just like this. That is a really useful tool, you'll use it a bunch. Okay, so we'll take that cube all the way back down to just a regular cube. Here's what I wanna do. Uh, I wanna show you some of the basic tools up here. So the very first one, and the most important one that you'll use most often, 3D Builder allows you to orient parts correctly. So inside of Teleport, whatever way you upload a part is the direction it's gonna be printed in. So it's really important to make sure that it's flat on the bed. Inside of 3D Builder, that textured plane right there is the bed. So if the part is not sitting flat on that when you pull it into 3D Builder, it won't sit flat inside of Teleport and you'll end up with a box full of spaghetti and we won't know how to fix it. So the thing you wanna do is actually this main tool, use this the most often. You go over here to object and then you hit settle and it will just fall to the ground like it's got gravity. And then you settle it right there and it's good. Let me show you that again. The thing is sitting crooked here and it could be anywhere in space. We'll put it up here in the air or whatever it was. And then you just hit settle and it falls down. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty darn handy. If you have a flat surface and you're close to a flat surface and you've kind of got it to where it will fall on that flat surface, so hit settle and it will fall into that orientation and now you're all set the other things you can do inside of here is you can reorient it a little bit to make it like more ideal like right here um what we're looking at right here is the rear so like the back of this cube right here would be the rear if you want to put the seam on the rear you can turn it so that the seam now goes along this corner rather than being in the middle of this face so that rotation can be done and you can reorient it in order to make sure the seam shows up. If you get a prototype part from Teleport and you see the seam on the wrong side, just pull it into 3D Builder, rotate it, and then you'll be good to go. But what I really wanna do and wanna show here just real quick is a very simple tool. We're gonna to insert another object. I'm gonna insert a cylinder here. And the cylinder is gonna be useful because we're gonna turn it into a hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it around here a little bit. I'm gonna uniformly resize it so that it's a little bit smaller. And you can see how you can do some basic modeling here with this in just a moment. We're gonna put a hole into this cube. We've got the cylinder placed into the cube. What you wanna do is now go over to uh, edit and then you can go to subtract and it will remove that cylinder just like that. And now we have a hole right there. The same way right now I have the cylinder selected that's the cylinder selected, that's the cylinder unselected. I'm gonna select the cube, and if I subtract it, we should have a cylinder left over. And that's how that works. So you can use the cube for cropping or the cylinder for creating holes. And this is how you can do basic modeling. So using the subtract feature is really, really useful. If you're making something like a lamp, you want it to have thin walls. So if you have designed a basic shape and we wanna make a square cube right here, you can go ahead and hit hollow, and you can set the wall thickness to one millimeter, insert the hollow, and now, theoretically, that should have a wall of one millimeter all the way around. Now you have a lampshade that can be shined through and you don't need base mode. In order to show this to you, we're gonna hit the split, and the split will now show that wall. This is the split plane right here. 
you can rotate it around in order to crop a part in half. And now you can see that one millimeter wall all the way around the outer side. And if you hit split, then it'll stay that way. And now you've made a dish. And if we want this dish to be ready to print, we don't want it to be printed like that. That'll have all kinds of support. So we'll rotate that around and then I'll go over here to object and I'll hit settle. And now it's ready to print. And we have successfully taken a lampshade, turned it into a dish and gone from there. If we ever wanted to make that wall thicker, we could go ahead, get rid of that cylinder and then go to here to edit and hollow and make the wall thicker. So if you want something kind of strong, now you can see kind of the preview of that hollow right there. And then if we go split and rotate that around and split it again, now our organizer is a whole lot chunkier and a little bit more abstract. Of course, I'm just kind of messing around with stuff uh, here. If you want to control certain features and that kind of stuff, again, you always have these numbers down here in order to do pretty precise movements of precise degrees, precise amounts of motion, that kind of thing. Okay, now right here, uh, let's go ahead and squash this cylinder down. I'm gonna squash the cylinder down, just like, oops, squashing the cylinder down, just like that, there we go. Now, I want to put something on this cylinder. So if you hit the emboss, the emboss feature right here, you can then select the wall that you want that emboss to be on, kind of the location you want that emboss to be on. And you can warm it up and move it around the way you want to. While this emboss is available, we can resize it here. We can rotate it just like the other stuff and we can move it around. The movement allows you to make it thicker and shorter. Well, move it around, sorry. No, sorry, the resize lets you make it thicker and shorter. So if you wanna make this a big old deep set of letters, you can do something like that. And then of course you can move it around like this. Um, and then move it here, move it there, so on and so forth. What you can do, here are two settings that are actually kind of interesting. Going to the side, let's go ahead and go red here. I'm gonna just change some stuff. This is just how it previews. And we'll change this to slant 3D. And you can change the text to the kind of standard sort of texts there. There you go. Now we're off the cube. I'm gonna go ahead and change this down to a smaller size there that's a little bit tighter. Just like this. There we go. Font, there we are. I'm gonna resize it down just like so. There we go. And I also don't want it to be very thick. So right here, you can change this. This is a really good uh, tip. Generally, you can go to a smaller situation. Let's see here if we can do this. I'm gonna set this to 3.5, the 3.5, which is the lowest that let me go. And then if I go for 0.25, oops, sorry, 25. 25% of that total height from the plane. Therefore, it should be pretty subtle. You don't want text to be very deep. And we'll emboss that. And now we have text on this nice little panel that can be printed off. So that's the emboss feature. You don't have to worry about smooth, don't have to worry about simplify, really. Those are kind of advanced features we won't go through here. Um, but if you want to extrude it down from something, uh, what we can do is if we insert, I'm gonna go ahead and insert a pyramid here because this is gonna be a really good demonstration of this. Pyramid right here will show the extrude down feature, just like this. Um, I'm just gonna try to be intentional with this, but I think I'm just gonna roll ahead with it. Just like this, just like this, just like this, just like that. The shading is a little bit off. Uh, moving it around, cool. Now, if I go ahead and do edit extrude down, you can see now that that is extruding all the way down to the plane there. And the very last thing that I wanna do is if I want this to be the part, cause I want whatever the heck this is, um, select them all by going control A, and then just merge them. And now you have a final file and you want to save as STL. You wanna save as an STL because that is what's necessary to upload. Don't do a 3MF or anything else that can get rejected. 3MFs have a lot of material and other information in it that's just not necessary and overcomplicates the file. Um, an STL is simpler and cleaner. If you want to, what you can also do with something like this is if you wanna go and build like a phone charger or something, like if we wanna keep that main stock right there, you can go here to um, the Slant Pod website and you have the 3D printed parts negatives right here. So things like a charger or a light or the clock or all these other little features can be pulled down for free 
and then you can drag that STL in here. And actually, let's just go ahead and do a quick demo of that because it is really useful. If we pull this open, pull that open, and then let's go for, I'm going to go for the light puck. There we are. Here's a light puck. So that is the actual real size of the light puck. So if I want to turn this thing into a lamp, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to scale it up a lot so that it can actually accept that puck. And then you can take this light puck and move it around just like, oops, I want to rotate it a little bit. Move it around just like this, just like this. And then we're going to move it back here into here like this, because what we're doing is we're making a slot for this light. Um, so we're going to say this is a clock tower of some sort. If you hit shift and click, then it gives you a lot smoother control. And we'll put that light puck right there. And then we can subtract that out. And now we have a slot in our model for that light puck. And the light puck will plug into there. And then the cord can run down and out the back right there. But there we are. We just sent, made a very simple kind of like lantern uh, model very quickly and easy inside a 3D builder. And of course, there are all of these other models over here too, like weights, suction cup, negatives, those kind of things, to where you can do basic modeling inside a 3D builder. So that is the intro to the basic tools of 3D Builder. It can be a really useful thing for prepping files. It can clean up files. It can let you do basic edits. Hope that helps for you guys. And if you want to create more models and then upload them to Teleport, Teleport is our service that allows you to print and ship these directly to customers. So you don't have to run a print farm. You can just do stuff like this where you design cool little products. Um, and then you can have these products delivered to people and you don't have to worry about all the production and the fulfillment. So check that out over at slantpod.com and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos about how to create 3D printed items. Have a great day, everybody.